No, we feel it was a little too, not too early to create it, yeah. but too early to, to introduce it everywhere in the world on the same year. Mm -hmm. That was, we had the feeling at the beginning, but as we are not technician of uh, Parfum, we were very confident uh, with them, but maybe it was a mistake. But it's not our job. Uh, my job is promoting and Lacroix's job is designing. Managing is Mr. Arnaud's job. Kunst in de greep van de commercie. Ontwerpers verkopen hun ziel, of althans het gebruik van hun naam, aan financiële concerns. Exclusieve merknamen veroveren de massamarkt. Voor Unilever was het dash misschien witter, maar de parfums van Calvin Klein ruiken beter. Zijn naam rook naar geld. Zijn verhaal is het succesverhaal van het designer parfum. Het begon bij toeval in de jaren zestig. Escape. Calvin Klein. I was working in this building and it was 23 years ago. And I was working at my father's supermarket in New York City, ringing up the cash register. And I opened it up and it was Family Circle magazine. It was a camel hair coat with a half belt in the back. And it said designed by Calvin Klein. And I thought, I quit. I'm no longer working in the supermarket. It's time to really devote all of my time to, um, uh, to clothes. Als ster schrijfster Georgina Howell over de grote marketingkwaliteiten van een ontwerper wiens naam een begrip werd. Calvin Klein was a master of image creation. He discovered that you have to have something to market besides the garment. And that thing that he had to market was himself. And at that time Calvin Klein was a sort of creature of the night, living a rather notorious nightlife. Maar Calvin Klein besefte al gauw de waarde van beruchtheid. Als snelle jetsetter, bevriend met beroemdheden en vaste bezoeker van de Studio 54 Club, begreep hij dat als roddelbladen geld konden verdienen aan zijn lifestyle, hij dat zelf ook kon. En zo legde hij een duidelijk verband tussen zijn eigen sexy image, de tijdgeest en het juiste product. It was compulsive or obsessive about work, about relationships, making a name, getting ahead. And I translated it into its, its obsession with, with love. I mean, and it almost to the point of, of, uh, of a kind of insanity. Yeah, I use that word, uh, but I don't mean certifiable, you know, clinical in, insane. I just mean a kind of, you know, a frenzy going on about it. Bij die uitzinnigheid hoorde een sensueel product, het best verkochte parfum, Obsession. I go by my gut. Something happens in my body. I feel it, I get an emotional reaction. And as soon as I get that reaction, I know it's right. The fragrance was very strong and very powerful. And it's the kind of, I thought, it was the, I wanted people to love it or hate it. Er gaan wel 200 ingrediënten in een parfum. Klein keurde eindeloos de melange. When I worked with the chemist, I was telling him I want scents that that are very sexual, that are, are erotic, that are I'm not looking for outdoorsy, sporty, green, you know, uh, light, fresh things. I'm looking for something that smells like sex. En zo ziet het er ook uit en zo klinkt het. Elk aspect van het product moet zijn boodschap nauwkeurig overbrengen. I had writers working on names, lists and lists of names. Climax was the one. Can you imagine? They were trying to convince me to use Climax. Eind jaren tachtig veranderde de sfeer van vrije seksualiteit die Klein handig had gebruikt voor zijn obsession. Maar de meeste van het image is in staat zijn eigen image aan te passen aan de tijdgeest. Society changed overnight. And it was the clean it up Reagan period. And all of a sudden... Calvin Klein got married. He, he cleaned up his act. Net als een productenlijn met zijn tweede parfum, even succesvol. 
it sounds like you're getting into my life and, and you know this what this is all going to come about isn't that interesting but let me just say first that that it, this is about my life you know and what was going on in the in in the country uh it, that fragrance is definitely a reflection of that there was the aids scare everyone was scared to death about having sex with anyone else and and what the consequences would would be and suddenly um uh, relationships, people started getting back into traditional values. He leads a perfect life. You know, his house is perfect, his wife is perfect, his appearance is perfect. Everything is 100% perfect. A product van het volmaakte huwelijk van Kelvin en Kelly. De nieuwe geur van Unilever moest natuurlijk een passende naam hebben om het te onderscheiden van het hedonisme van Obsession. En weer lag de oplossing in het leven van Klein zelf. De catalog voor de Duchess of Windsor's sale of, of, of the, the jewelry at that time. And I get all of the catalogs from Sotheby's and Christie's. And I ran up to Barry's office. Barry is my, my closest friend and business partner, Barry Schwartz, and ran up there and, Barry, what do you think? What do you think about this ring? I want to get Kelly a, uh, a, a ring. And uh, I think this is so beautiful, this ring, the diamonds and the band, the gold band. And uh, uh, he said, Calvin, he said, look at the name of the ring. He said, it's called an eternity ring. He said, isn't that, I said, that's it. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, that's, that's what this perfume is, is, is all about. And, you know, I had to get the ring because uh, that, it was just, it, it fit in so perfectly. Calvin Klein en Unilever doopten hun nieuwe kind Eternity. Ze hadden het concept, de naam, de geur, nu alleen nog een passend omhulsel. When I launched Eternity, I, I, oh, this was so great because I remember, I remember falling in love with this bottle. De heldere lijnen van het flesje, gebaseerd op een antiek parfumflesje, moest de zuiverheid uitdrukken van de bodem tot het stopje. It symbolized it's the cross. I mean, it's uh, it, it symbolized union. It symbolized relationship. It symbolized a kind of spiritual quality that I was looking for. Uh, it said through through the cross. It said marriage, commitment. It said all of those things. And heilig schennis. Uh, everyone told me don't talk about that. They thought it might be considered controversial. They thought it might be that I was trying to take advantage of sell something through religion or you know some some kind of crazy thing. I saw it differently. Kelvin's geloof werd beloond. Eternity leverde miljoenen dollars op, veel meer dan zijn kledinglijn. Maar het image sloot nog steeds aan bij de makkelijk te dragen elegante Kelvin Klein look. Image of all of these beautiful blondes and, and uh, sort of in their 20s or in their 30s with children and and wearing this fragrance. And I promise you that they were all standing online uh, uh, for me to sign autographs. And I thought this is exactly who I was trying to reach. En hij bereikte ze ook. Maar niets duurt eeuwig, zelfs eternity niet. De tijden veranderen en een rijke doelgroep verlangt steeds weer een nieuw product. Calvin Klein en Unilever moesten een truc verzinnen voor de nerveuze jaren 90. De nieuwe geest is sensueel, maar met een sportieve ondertoon. Het vervolg kwam, gesteund door een reclamecampagne van 10 miljoen dollar, 41 miljoen geurstripjes in modetijdschriften, dure televisiespots en presentaties op verkooppunten. Calvin Klein. Ja, hij heeft een great ass en een great design in de bottle. En mensen like het. Vooral de ass. Ze zijn altijd standing. Looking at the camera and they're like, wow, this ad is so exciting. Yeah, I'll buy some, I'll buy some. En het belangrijkste, de sleutel tot elke succesvolle presentatie, Calvin Klein in levende lijven. And I hope I get a chance to meet all of you. And I'm really happy to escape to Macy's. Thank you. Sometimes you just get tired. You get tired of smiling and you get tired of of signing i mean you do get writer's cramp and 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 sometimes i can't re or i don't understand the names and, and you know it's all of that silly stuff I mean, people to stand online to see me is really it's fantastic and effective 
Voor de schrijfkramp toesloeg was er al voor 10.000 dollar aan escape ingeslagen door de klanten. Misschien speelt Calvin Klein bewust of intuïtief in op de verandering in de maatschappij... door zijn privéleven in zijn parfum te betrekken. Eerst Obsession, toen Eternity en nu Escape. Maar een Escape, een ontsnapping waaruit... Escape, Calvin Klein. Geen ontwerper, fabrikant of verkoper kan ontsnappen aan de werkelijkheid. Zelfs de kledingafdeling van Calvin Kleins onderneming ontsnapte kort geleden maar net aan een faillissement in de langste recessie sinds de Tweede Wereldoorlog. This is a funny recession. Many white collar people have been affected. This isn't a blue collar recession. This is a recession which says 44 lawyers at Skadden Arps are laid off today. Uh, X number of stockbrokers are laid off. People who can afford to spend $125 for Paul Stewart cotton shirt. These are the people who are being laid off. Hi, everybody. Gather around me. Everybody. I feel a sermon coming on. Thank you. Hi. I very rarely do this, but since I did it once already, I guess I have to do it three times, so I'm going to talk for a second. Um, Donna Karen Hart and Pep Talk de boodschap van Donna aan de verzamelde klanten en journalisten is weg met negatief denken bestrijd de recessie door te kopen denk positief koop de industrie los uit die economische misère zakelijke mode met krijtstreepjes voor positieve denkers Donna Karen levert kleren voor succes The one thing fashion designers don't want you to ever think is that they're having a hard time because they're representational of, a, of success and of achievement and wealth. That's why you want to see their name on your dress or your shirt or your because you want to, you want to uh, sympathize, you want to empathize, and you want their status. So certainly we, none of us want to empathize with somebody who's uh, about to file for Chapter 11, do we? Uh, I think that designers who uh, pride themselves on knowing the tenor of the times sense that we're moving into a conservative mode and so the clothing which they're designed.